Welcome to November to Remember on Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review the Human Centipede 3 full sequence. 100% politically incorrect. Written and directed by Tom Six, this film stars Dieter Laser, Lawrence R. Harvey, Eric Roberts, and Brie Olson. Completing the series, this film takes place in a world where the Human Centipede 1 and 2 were both movies. A warden of a troubled prison takes inspiration from the movies and tries to create a 500-person human centipede as a deterrent to crime. What did we like? This is definitely poking fun at the rest of the Human Centipede movies. Having Lawrence R. Harvey with a Texan accent, like everything that he says had me cracking up. And I think this whole movie is just fucking hilarious. We have a gastrointestinal bite ring that holds the mouth open so they can't stop the feces from coming into their system. In the Human Centipede 1, Dieter Laser had flashes of this kind of manic energy. This one, he turned it on at the beginning and that was it. There was no <laughs> off, but it was great. He was so funny in everything that he did. You barely understood what he was saying half the time, but just his like facial expressions and his like body movement was very hilarious and it just added to his character and added to the satirical nature of the film. It was also nice having Brie Olsen in this movie because she is absolutely dynamite and she's in very provocative situations the entire film. Maybe it's, it's hot in the desert, so she's got glistening boobs the entire time. We have close-ups of her butt cheeks as she's walking. Uh, great. Though there wasn't a lot of on-screen graphic violence in this, the stuff that we did see was really well done and it was like cringeworthy, especially during like the castration scene. Yeah, that was a shocking scene. I didn't see them pulling that out. You kind of did. And I also like that Tom Six made a cameo in this movie. The writer and director of the film. I mean, if you've seen the second one, he's stroking his own dick off with that. So in this one, he had to make he had an appearance. To. <laughs> it's the only place they could have gone with that. And now what didn't we like? For a movie where we're used to kind of like shock value, where we want to see the human centipede, we didn't really get to see it till the end, which isn't my dislike. It's the building and the pacing to getting there. They kept alluding to the idea, but they kept derailing it and getting off track. We've got to make a human centipede of our prisoners. So ass to mouth, sharing one digestive system. The pacing was really slow at times, and at some points it was just, it was straight up boring. The fact that the stills and I believe the cover are the only shot of the 500 man centipede that we get. There is some clever camera work where it shows a couple different rows of inmates, but if you've seen any promotional materials, you've already seen the one shot. If you've seen one human centipede, you've seen all the human centipedes. But have you seen the human caterpillars? In the first human centipede, Dieter Laser stole the show with his, his energy and his deadpan kind of portrayal of the mad scientist. In this one, it seemed like they just told him to go crazy, we're gonna keep the cameras running, and we're not cutting anything. It was hilarious, but for the wrong reasons. I know it was a satire, it's poking fun, but it just, it was too much, and it was too long. It gets draining. Like, it is funny, but yeah, just he, chill the fuck out. He is like 80% <laughs> of this movie. But they've got lots of other good people. They've got Lawrence R. Harvey, who's fantastic in the second one, and he's doing, he's not doing very much. I thought so he was- didn't use him. He was hilarious in this movie. He, he, he when really he had his little, When he had his little one lines and he kind of played off of them, but he wasn't his own person. Right. He was an accessory yeah. at best. They could have done more with him. I thought they needed to. Why, why bother having him back if you're not going to use him? But it, was think... his, but it was his idea. You sounded like him just now. <laughs> but it was my idea. And although the wounds are still fresh, you get the idea. <laughs> Similar to other roles that we see him in, Eric Roberts did not play a large part in this movie. He shows up at the beginning of the movie and then he shows up at the end of the movie. And they kind of played it up like he was going to be a central figure in this film and he wasn't. So that was a little disappointing, but I mean, I'd rather watch Brie Olsen the whole time anyway. <laughs> and now time for our final thoughts and ratings. The Human Centipede 3 was actually a really fun time. I know, it's the Human Centipede 3. And a lot of people don't like the series, but I thought this was absolutely hilarious. I thought Lawrence R. Harvey did a fantastic job. Uh, Dieter Laser was absolutely crazy, and I loved it. I mean, it did get draining, but you know, 
it was funny for most of the time. It was great having Brie Olsen here. Once again, the production value was great. We had some great shock value in certain points, but it did drag a little and it took a little bit long to get to the 500 man centipede. But all in all, if you're a fan of the rest of the series, you're going to like this film. So I'm gonna give this four machine guns and megaphones out of five. I felt that Tom Six did a great job satiring his own series. I was disappointed in the fact that the pacing of the story was way too slow and we didn't really get to see the 500 human centipede until the very end. So it's kind of a letdown in that sense, but first 45 minutes to an hour will have you laughing. And if you're watching with your friends, you're gonna need to laugh even more. So that being said, I'm gonna give this film three and a half, lighten your cigars like a G out of five. If you're a fan of the first Human Centipede and the second one, you like what Tom Six did with those, then this movie is not really going to satisfy you very much. It's much less a body horror film and more of a pat on the back, look, I can make fun of myself too kind of movie. There's, the pacing is terrible, there's no suspense, he's totally done away with all that. I can see what he's trying to do with the satire and the humor, but there's no real jokes in it. We're all, we're just supposed to laugh at how absurd the whole situation is. Dieter Laser, he's a great actor and I love what he can do with the character, but it was too much. It's exhausting. I felt it did show its low budget a bit. There were very few practical effects as far as the gore goes, it was really, taken back from the second one. So if that's what you're after, a gorier, longer human centipede, you're gonna get about half that. Anyway, it is Dieter Laser, so I'm not gonna lock it out completely. So that being said, I'm gonna give it two unimpressed doctors out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film. And if you haven't seen it, there's links in the description and you can check out the full series on Blu-ray from Shout slash Scream Factory and I need to pick it up because I need to see the behind the scenes of this one. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated with our reactions, reviews, and games of What Would You Do?